Hello and welcome to my fourth tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to perform a backlink analysis in this software. Backlink is usually presented for actually compressed columns, but let's consider another scenario. A cantilever beam with a narrow rectangular cross section subjected to lateral torsional backlink. Let's create a new model first, uh, select a unit system, I will choose the one with millimeters again, uh, and I have to import the geometry now. I will use the step file format like in previous videos. Uh, so, we have the geometry imported and I could create a mesh now, uh, but before I will do it, let's focus on a small but important detail. Here you can notice that the top surface of the beam is divided into two parts, the bigger one and the smaller one, uh, and that serves a particular purpose. Uh, I modeled this in FreeCAD and here you can notice the same thing, that the top surface is divided into two regions. Uh, and that's because the analytical solution assumes that load is applied just to this edge here. Uh, but it would be hard to uh, apply the load only to this edge uh, using available types of loads and uh, constraints in Calculix. Uh, so I decided to create a small surface here and apply, the load, apply a load directly to it. Let's go back to Prepomex uh, and now I have to create a mesh. Uh, I will specify a maximum element size of 10 millimeters uh, and uh, generate the mesh now. The mesh is already created, uh, so I can proceed to the analysis setup. Uh, I will define the material. Uh, let's use the same uh, elastic properties like in previous videos. So I have to specify the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Now I will create a section applied to the whole beam. And now before I proceed to the step setup, uh, I will create a rigid body constraint. Uh, you can remember this one from uh, one of the previous videos, we defined this already. Uh, so mm, let's create a reference point first. Uh, instead of providing coordinates, I will just choose the uh, point right here. This will become a reference point. Uh, and now uh, I can create a rigid body constraint. Mm, this point, uh, reference point will be selected automatically, I just have to uh, pick a face to which the constraint will be applied. So let's select this, the small surface right here. Mm, and the rigid body constraint is already defined, uh, I can create a new step. Uh, I will use the buckle step type and leave the default settings here. Uh, I will just uh, tell you that uh, I could specify the number of backlink factors, mm, but in this particular case, uh, we are interested only in the first uh, backlink mode, and that's usually the case, so I believe the uh, first backlink factor uh, request here. Mm, let's create a, a boundary condition first. Uh, as you can remember, the uh, beam is supposed to be a uh, cantilever beam, so I will apply a fixed constraint to this uh, back face. Mm, and now I just have to create a load, and this will be concentrated force uh, applied to the uh, reference point that we created. Uh, so I will choose the reference point mm, and uh, I will define the uh, load in Y direction acting downwards. Now you may wonder why the uh, load is just one Newton, why it's unit load. And that's because as output you will get a critical backlink factor. Uh, and this factor apply, uh, multiplied uh, by uh, the load that we applied here is equal to the uh, actual backlink load. And since we use a unit load, then uh, just the, the, the critical backlink factor that we get will be equal to the uh, critical backlink load itself. So it's a matter of convenience. Uh, I will confirm this now uh, and I can submit the analysis um, and we will just, we'll just have to wait for the results. Uh, this time it might take a while because uh, the mesh is quite dense. The results are already available, so let's open them uh, and let's see uh, what we got from this analysis. Here you can notice uh, that we have a backlink factor, that's the critical backlink factor I told you about uh, before. Uh, and we can compare this with analytical solution. Uh, here I have the analytical value. Uh, if you compare this, this value uh, right here uh, with the one that we got here, uh, you will notice that they are quite similar. Uh, they are not uh, very close to each other. Uh, there is some, some difference between them. Uh, but that's actually typical for uh, backlink analysis uh, when you compare the uh, analytical values with um, those obtained from the analysis. You might expect some differences uh, and uh, still the, the results are quite uh, are in quite good agreement. Uh, so we shouldn't complain in this case uh, about the accuracy. Of course we could try with different mesh density but um, in this case uh, this, this one should be sufficient. Um, what I should also tell you uh, is that here we can see the uh, deformed shape of the beam. Uh, it's a uh, first uh, backlink mode shape. Mm, but I should also tell you that um, the displacements uh, dis uh, that can be seen right here, uh, just like in the case of model analysis, uh, aren't real. Uh, and if you want to get the actual values of displacements, then you would have to carry out a non-linear backlink analysis. And that's it for, for the fourth uh, Prepomex tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. 
Uh, again, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.